All right, so a final quick recap of our four fairness criteria. The majority criterion basically says if you have a majority candidate, then that person or candidate should win the election. The Condorcet criterion says if you have a Condorcet candidate, then that candidate should be the winner of the election. The monotonicity criterion says that if a candidate wins an original election and the only changes made in a re-election favor the original candidate, then that candidate should win the re-election as well. And the IIA says that if you have a candidate who wins an election and a non-winning candidate drops out, then that candidate should still be the winner. So let's look at a summary table of our fairness criterion. So essentially, this is what you're going to have to do when you're trying to determine whether or not a scenario violates a certain criterion. The first thing you have to do is identify, does the criterion even apply? So this is the hypothesis part. So first thing you ask yourself, is there a majority candidate? If there is, then you test to see does the majority criterion or is it violated? If there's not a majority candidate, then the majority criterion does not apply and you have nothing to worry about. Second, is there a Condorcet candidate? If there is, you would move forward to see if the Condorcet criterion is violated. If there's not a Condorcet candidate, then the Condorcet criterion does not apply and you move on. Next, you check for was there a change that only helped the original winner? Well, the first thing you check for is, is there a re-election or is there a second election or is there a recount or is there something to indicate that two different elections occurred? If so, then you ask yourself, were there changes that only helped the original winner and no other changes? And if that's true, then the monotonicity criterion applies. If it's not, then you move on. And again, this um, IIA only applies when you have some type of an election, um, the re-election, a second election, a recount, a straw vote versus an election, anything like that. But in that case, you have to have a non-winner dropping out in order for the criterion to apply. So the first question to ask yourself is, do these apply? Once you determine that it does apply, then you ask yourself, well, if there is a majority candidate, did they win? Because if they won, then there's no violation. If they lost, that's when the violation occurs. If you have a Condorcet candidate, did they win? If they did, then no violation occurred. But if they lost, then a violation occurred. And then you would just continue this process. If the monotonicity Criterion applies, did it cause the original winner to lose? If so, it's a violation. And if the IIA applies, did that cause the original winner to lose? And if so, it's a violation. And remember that there are only certain methods for where these violations can occur. For the majority criterion, the board account is the only place that it can occur. So if you have a majority criterion being applied to a plurality method election, you don't even have to check because you know there's no chance that a majority criterion can be violated. For the Condorcet criterion, you have three of the four that can provide a violation. For the monotonicity criterion, only one, plurality with elimination. And for the IIA, actually all four of the methods that we have studied can be a violation. So make sure that when you're trying to determine which, if any, fairness criterion have been violated, that you use this chart to see do they apply, and if so, have they been violated. So that brings us to Arrows and Possibility Theorem, which says this. In an election with three or more candidates, and remember all of our elections we're going to have three or more candidates, there is no preferential voting method that will satisfy all fairness or all four fairness criteria. So what that is saying is that it not, it's not just the four that we've studied, but there can't be a voting method that will in fact satisfy all four fairness criteria. So the theorem, um, a statement that has been proven deductively based on other theorems or axioms, which are accepted fundamentals, the conclusion becomes a mathematical fact as long as the conditions of the theorems have been met. 
So let's discuss both the hypothesis and the conclusion of the theorem. Well, the hypothesis is that we have a um, election that has three or more candidates because that's what has to apply in order for Arrow's impossibility theorem to apply. And then the conclusion is that there's no preferential voting method that will satisfy all four of the fairness criterion.